In today's video, I want to show you how to use the powerful tracing tools in Microsoft Excel. These will help you really figure out where your formulas are coming from. I'm going to click on this cell and it says J4 divided by J11. Uh, so I want to find out even more about where that formula is uh, coming from. So let's see how, how we can trace it out. Now this will work in Excel 2016, Excel 2013, Excel 2010, Excel 2007. This has been around for a while. I'll pick on the, um, I'll, I'll pick on cell K4 where the formula is. And I'll pick on the formulas tab, formulas. And I'll come over here and I'll pick on trace precedence. Let's see what happens. You see how it adds the lines in and it shows you the cells from which it's coming from. So sometimes just by seeing these lines, it'll help you determine that maybe you're pointing to the wrong cell. And maybe that's why the cell, the formula is incorrect or it has an error. But let's go a little bit further. I'll pick on trace precedence again. Then I'll pick on trace precedence again. Now we have lines going all over the place. Let me show you how to read this. You follow the lines. If I change any of these cells, it'll change the column total, which will change the grand total, which will change the percent of total. So now I, I was really able to trace the formula out and really see where it's coming from. So when a cell has a formula, you keep on picking on trace precedence as many times as you wanted to, and you will be able to trace your formulas out. Now, when you're, if you print it right now, let's do a print you would see how the lines would print. So that could be good documentation for you. Now let's remove the arrows. On the formulas menu, I'll pick on remove arrows and they go away. So when a cell has a formula, you pick on trace precedence. On the other hand, I want to pick on cell C4. Notice how C4 does not have a formula. I want to see if I change that cell, what other cells are going to change as a result. So then you pick on trace dependence. All right, so I'll pick on a cell that does not have a formula, and then I'll pick on trace dependence. Now we have all these arrows. Let me show you how to read this. Uh, you follow the lines. If I change C4, it'll change C11, which will change D4. Uh, I mean, C4 will change C11, C4 will change D4, and C4 will change uh, J4. So those cells must have a formula that points back to cell C4. So I, if I change C4, the cells with the arrows will also change. But just like with the other one, we can keep on going. So I'll pick on trace dependence, and then I'll pick on trace dependence again. Now we have lines going all over the place. So let me show you how to read this. You follow the lines. If I change C4, it'll change D4, which will change D11, which will change the grand total, which will change all of the percents of totals. So that one cell is going to change all of those different cells. When a cell does not have a formula, you pick on trace pen, uh, dependence, and you can do that one multiple times to really see what's going to happen when you change that cell. Now notice how this one has a dotted line. When you see the dotted line that, that way, it means it's going to go to a different sheet. But here's what you do. When you see the dotted line, you're going to double click on the dotted line, double click. Then it'll show you exactly which sheet and which, which cell is going to change on that sheet as well. Now that would have come up within trace precedence as well or trace dependence. When you see the dotted line, that means it's referencing a different sheet or maybe even a different workbook. Then notice how I double clicked on the dotted line. Then you see exactly which, uh, work, which sheet and cell is going to be affected by that. Here I'll pick on cancel. When I'm done with the arrows, I'll pick on remove arrows. So let's try a formula with an error. I'm going to purpose, purposely make an error here. I'll say equals this divided by J10. And it says division by zero. Now, this is going to be a really simple one, but let me show you how you might use these. I'll pick on the cell with the error. I'll pick on trace precedence. Then by seeing the visual lines, oh, I followed this one. Oh, I pointed to the wrong cell. Oh, I really meant to say J11. So I'll change the formula up here to say J11. And then the error goes away because it's pointing to the proper cell. So that, that might be a way to use the tracing techniques to, to uh, determine your error cells. It's not always that smooth, but sometimes it is. Okay, so I want to show you how to trace your formulas out.